the next topic here for the unit 1.1 is describe and interpret the rock cycle okay so you have to describe the rock cycle let's take a quick look at the rock cycle here's a diagram showing the rock cycle in the earth's crust this particular diagram can be found in the new york state earth science reference tables what it shows are the different types of rocks and how they can change over time let's go through a quick example here is a chunk of an igneous rock known as granite you can see it's made up of intergrown crystals of potassium feldspar and quartz and biotite and that's what gives it its speckled look now as we mentioned granite's an igneous rock which forms from the solidification of melted material magma or lava granite happens to form deep underground from the slow cooling of magma but the question we want to look at now is, well, what can happen to this igneous rock over time? And there's a handful of possibilities. First thing that could happen is our granite could be lifted up, forced up from beneath the ground, where it's exposed to weathering and erosion. The wind, the rain, the ice, these forces break this rock down into little small pieces called sediments. So now our granite has been broken into small pieces of granite. Now these little small sediments can be deposited and buried and then compacted and cemented together to form a brand new rock called a sedimentary rock, like this piece of sandstone. So simply by weathering and eroding the granite into sediments and then squeezing the sediments back together, you've converted your igneous rock into a sedimentary rock. But that's not the only thing that can happen to our igneous rock. What if it is pushed even deeper underground by the movement of Earth's tectonic plates? And in so, it is exposed to intense heat and or pressure, causing it to metamorphose or recrystallize into a metamorphic rock, like this piece of gneiss seen here. So, with the simple addition of some heat and pressure, we've turned our igneous rock into a metamorphic rock. But there's still one more option. What if our igneous rock is exposed to intense heat, causing it to melt and return into liquid state of magma? Well, it can then, of course, cool and solidify again, giving us another igneous rock. But maybe this time it will cool quickly and give us something with smaller crystals or maybe no crystals at all, like this piece of obsidian. So what you can see is that on the rock cycle, any rock is able to turn into any other rock when exposed to the different processes in and on the Earth's surface. Remember, we start with these three types of rocks. These are our three classifications. And from them, we can go to anything else. Again, let's look at the igneous rock, right? Igneous rock we know forms from melting into magma and solidification. But remember, it can melt again, and that process can happen over and over and over again. So I can have an igneous rock that becomes igneous again, maybe a different kind of igneous rock. But any rock can melt into magma and form an igneous rock. As seen on the chart, sedimentary metamorphic rocks, they can all be melted and ultimately result in an igneous rock forming. Well, let's look at the sedimentary rock. Now remember, these form from sediments, sediments that have been deposited, buried, and pressure causing them to compact and cement together. But of course, any rock can be weathered into sediments, and therefore any metamorphic or igneous rock can become a sedimentary rock. Finally, we have our metamorphic rock, and remember these form when rocks are exposed to intense heat and pressure. But of course, that process can take place with any type of rock, sedimentary, igneous, or even metamorphic rocks. So the key idea behind the rock cycle is the fact that any rock can become any other kind of rock. It can even become itself. Change is always taking place. It's generally slow over many millions of years. However, the results can be impressive. Thanks. Okay. I think that's very clear, isn't it? Because we've gone through the different things and you can see how they all relate together, right? So that's what rock cycle is all about. What we've learned in igneous sedimentary and metamorphic, we just link it up together. Okay. So I've got this IG question, A, B, C. Right, and I want you to identify what is A, B, and C. Yeah, that's the question, and um, let's go ahead. Who wants to go with A? 
look carefully and you can type in the answer. That's correct. A is sedimentary rock. And it's because it's, you know, the sedi sediment, yeah, it's pointing to that. Okay. Yeah. A is sedimentary. Okay, so B is metamorphic and C is igneous. Thank you. Well, A is sedimentary. You're right. Um, B, metamorphic. Okay. Good, good, good. You've been typing it in. Good. And C is igneous. See, cooling and solidifying below the crust. Yeah. This, uh, uh, it's brought to the surface by uplift. You need to know what's uplift. Yeah. When it's pushed up. And as I told you, it's because of something called plate movements. And that's something I'll teach you later. It's a little complicated topic. Rocks are pushed from under. Yeah. By Earth's forces. And it may get exposed on the surface. So granite, which is actually formed deep inside the Earth, may come up on the surface. So it's possible that you have granite on the surface. If it's on the surface, it's easy to do mining. It's called open cast mining. We will learn about that. Okay. Um, right. Uh, what else? B is metamorphic. Yeah, it's heated and changed. When you see that word changed, you can easily understand that is metamorphic. Yeah. What's the other word for transport? Transport and deposition together. What do you call it? transport and deposition they basically took erosion that's right even, even though here it says weathering and erosion erosion is basically that transport and deposition okay and where um, uh, the where it will form these layers next question what happens after the deposition what happens to the sediments after the deposition yeah certainly i'll repeat the question so if you have a rock let's say um, I've got my mouse here, right? Oh, well, just bear with me. Uh, yeah, so I can see now. So let's imagine that this is a piece of rock. If this rock gets broken down, like, you know, things uh, falling on it, rainwater, wind blowing on it, um, you know, chemicals like acids acting on it, it will break down. That process is called weathering. And then after weathering, the sediments will move. The wind will blow it. The rain will wash it. That process of moving transportation and then going into the sea and forming those deposited layers, that's called erosion, erosion. Now, once these layers form, um, as well, listen carefully, once these layers are deposited, my question is, what happens to it after that? Very good. Right on. Good. Those are the two key words I asked you to remember, compaction and cementation. Compaction is pressed down. Cementation is like how they glued up together. Right? Extremely good. So that's so you guys are good with that. I'm happy. Um, the next question, this is an IG question. I'm not saying anything. I'd like you to put it into, into the chat. Uh, it's a little confusing uh, in the way the question is presented. And I personally don't like this question. I don't like it because, you know, when people make questions, they make uh, sometimes not such perfect questions. They are done by people, right? So even IG questions can be sometimes not so good. Uh, there is a little confusion in the picture. But still, it is answerable. I mean, doable. Okay, so just look at the letter and tell me what is A, B, C. Okay, good. I've got different answers. A is metamorphic, mm. and then B is igneous, and C is sedimentary. You got it right. Okay, B is igneous, that's my right, and C is sedimentary. So you've got that right as well. So in, you know what, I, the confusion in the question here is, see, A uh, is uh, the metamorphic rock, right? By burial heat and pressure, it turns into metamorphic. Okay, so this metamorphic rock will melt and turn into magma first. They should have put magma here first, you know, like a, like a box with magma. And then magma, by cooling, will become igneous. So here it just says melting. If they had said melt, melting and cooling, it would have been fine. But they just use the word melting. Now melting will only create magma. It doesn't create igneous rock. So I'm not happy with that bit. Okay, anyway, but you, you all got it. So you, this is a proper question. So it melts, turns, cools again, turns into igneous. And igneous rock by weathering, erosion, transportation, and deposition. In other words, transportation, deposition together is erosion but they've given it again separately. Um, it will go and form, again, they didn't use the word compaction and cementation. That is the correct word here. It's not weathering, erosion, trans. It should have been weathering, erosion, compaction, and cementation. Then it turns into sedimentary rock. 
Sediment rock by burial heat and pressure, yeah, it will turn into metamorphic. So I think these two processes should have been slightly put differently. Anyway, uh, you guys can reply to me privately, okay? Answer privately. I know it's a little confusing, but please, even if it's wrong, I'm perfectly fine with it, okay? We are here to learn. Um, when you make a mistake, I can correct you. So no worries. Um, okay, so first one is cooling. Cooling out of all of this is A, right? Magma cools to form igneous rock. And B is melting. Metamorphic rock and igneous rocks melt and become magma. So that was easy. Then the other three. Heat and pressure. Uh, metamorphic rock is formed by heat and pressure. So D has to be heat and pressure. Igneous rocks by heat and pressure. Sediment rocks by heat and pressure is becoming metamorphic, right? Then weathering and erosion is what's happening to um, uh, B, uh, sorry, igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks. So, so that's C, let us see, weathering and erosion. So due to weathering and erosion, rocks like igneous rock and sedimentary rock and even the other sedimentary rock can become sediments first. And then compaction and cementation is E, okay? So E is when all the, uh, sediments are then compacted and cemented together to form sedimentary rocks. Um, this is another question which is very similar to what you did. In the previous question, you had to uh, write the name um, letter from here, you know, cooling, melting and all that, these processes. Now, you all the processes are given to you, you've got to identify the rock. Okay, this is also very easy. I'm just skipping it, okay? Um, here, I will put this picture in the notes. So what we've learned today is the rock cycle, the different rocks, how is it formed, what are the characteristics, okay? That's the end of unit one. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat. Well, later on, let's say um, after a lesson, if you need to contact me, if you wanna like, while you're studying, you have a question, you are, you know, you can come back to me. It's okay, you can WhatsApp me. Don't call me, please, just put a WhatsApp message and you can even email me on that email address. Okay, this is for just for you guys. School, school is S-K-O-O-L, okay? School of Natural Science at gmail.com. You just email me and I will get back to you with your doubt. But just go to joinmyquiz.com and enter that game code, okay? We're gonna do it live now.